one of the things that I uh, have told people in the past, and I don't know whether it's been helpful or not, I think it has, is, you know, it, just to think about the um, gospel stories as a rescue and read them with the perspective of this was a rescue. This is, and, and when I really think about the love that had to be involved for God to send his only son and to allow him to suffer the way he did to take on all of the sins for people who a were the ones who crucified him and B didn't deserve it. When I think about that love, it's hard for me not to think that I, I don't have value. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's like I put my value in that and that gives me hope like, okay, well, if God would send his son to save me, I have to have value. And that's where that kind of hope starts is, Mm. um, you know, he, he sent his son into the world for a sinner like me. Um, you know, and I, I of course don't think Paul was, was the worst sinner, but Paul does. But I think all of us have that kind of attitude of why would he send anybody? Why would he send anyone to save me, let alone his son? Mm. So um, I think that's a good place for me to start. And I think about the gospel of John, because John really lays it out. You know, God so loved the world um, that he sent his only son. So I, I would encourage somebody to start reading the scripture as far as hope is concerned. And then, you know, as you're doing that, just look around at the things that man hasn't created, but God has created. And those are things that kind of give me hope as well. Um, yeah. And I think that's what makes it so healing um, in, in so many ways. It's so hard for people to get past things in life, to overcome things in life because the lack of hope or what, they're, what they have their hope in. But I think for a believer, we, 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 see the, we see the end from the beginning kind of, right? A little bit better. There's a little bit more clarity because there's so much truth and so much wisdom and, and love and grace and mercy and all these things that are tied to, to, to all the, the great biblical um, uh, events and parables and everything else. And, and I think it's the, it's the ability to, to, to be healed in our life and not carry these wounds, these big gaping wounds through every day that people can't seem to ever overcome and, and, that's so combined with the, the peace that I get from, from trusting in God, it's, it's, he, it's healing. I do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others who have no hope. The real bottom line is whether we really have a hope in Christ is how we face the monster death. If we face the monster death with hope in our hearts, that the Lord Jesus Christ has done exactly what it says in the book of Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14, that on the cross, he destroyed the devil who through through all of our lifetime has held us into bondage to the fear of death. We fear death no more because the Lord Jesus Christ has accomplished victory over death, meaning he's accomplished victory over sin and death and even Satan himself. Mm. So what need we fear? And so when he talks about the fact that Listen, I want to, too many times we're uninformed. We don't know the scriptures. The scripture is very clear to teach. We have victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the bottom line is we will never, never, ever be taken out of his hand as we, we are, as we have trusted in him, you know, that we're in his hand and no one is able to pluck them out of his hand. He said, and my father, which gave them me is greater than all. No one is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. So we have hope of eternal life. We have hope that even when we face the monster death, we need not fear because he's won the victory over that too. How we actually perceive hope changes the more mature we are as a Christian. And I remember um, you and I were out for a bike ride and I, and I started to, you and I were talking about something and, and, and I remember saying, you know, it's gotten to the point now to where like eternal life is awesome. And I'm grateful for that. 
but the hope that I have isn't so much that my hope is that I don't get there and have him be disappointed in how I used my time. Hmm. Like, and your, and your transition. Yeah. That transition like happened for me. Like, like, yeah, I, eternal life. It's almost like, I, I don't want to say I take it for granted, but I, but I know that he told me that I have it and I know that he does not lie. But now I'm really about, man, did I disappoint him? Did I, was I put here to do something that I didn't do because I got focused on something that I didn't need to be focused on? You know, and that's, that's kind of my hope now is that I don't disappoint. Um, can you talk a little bit about that, Bob? Like we had, you, you said, oh man, that's a sign that you know, you're starting to grow as a Christian. You know, when, the, the more concerned you are about that, the more evidence, the fact that God is indeed working in your heart because people that aren't concerned, you know, they don't have uh, a clear assurance because if they have assurance, then their assurance is in Christ and what right. he has done and they don't want to displease him. But let me just point out that sometimes when we look at our lives, we have a tendency to judge ourselves pretty harsh. And we understand that he knows all about, he knew all about us before the foundation of the world. He knew all about our failings. And so when it says in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, that's mean all things. That means even our shortcomings. So let's understand the Lord Jesus Christ as the suffering servant of Isaiah and also the great high priest, and the one who is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Here's how Isaiah described him in Isaiah 42, which Matthew uses in Matthew chapter 12 to describe him and says that he will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. In other words, he didn't come with fanfare to say, here I am the king, everybody bow down. But here's what it says. A bruised reed he will not break. In a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth, judge, uh, uh, bring forth justice. Now stop and think about that. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who can't, said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am what? Meek and lowly of heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. Now, a bruised reed, that's a, uh, that's a twig or that's a, a stalk like a corn stalk that is bent over and uh, it looks like it's crippled, right? And it's bent over. Sometimes we're bent over with the burdens of life or the burdens of feeling like we failed and we're just bent over. I like to use the example when I was in Arkansas, I pastored a country church and everybody had a, had a garden. And so I felt obligated to put in a garden. And I looked out one day and my corn was all bent over because of the rain and so I went out and thought, what you do is you just straighten it up, right? <laughs> and I broke every one of them and ruined my corn crop. And my friends in the church that were farmers said, oh, Bob, you don't do that. Let the sun bring it up. And uh, I thought there's the lesson right there, a bruised reed, because sometimes we're bent over and we want to have a tendency to get straightened up and fly right. Somebody comes to us and, <laughs> and they hurt us. The Lord Jesus Christ ministers to us when we're bent over. And it says a, 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 a faintly burning wick, he will not quench. Sometimes all we have is just a little, just a little bit of fire movement in our lives. We're not very motivated and we failed him. And he doesn't quench that little, that fire, he fans that flame. And so he's a tender, he's a tender, hearted and compassionate master that cares for us even when we fail mm -hmm. to draw us back to his word and give us hope when we're in a hopeless situation. Mm -hmm.